There are survival tricks from history that feel almost unbelievable until you try them yourself. This is one of them. Long before batteries were reliable, long before soldiers could flip a switch or strike a match without worrying about being spotted, there was a crude but dependable way to create steady light from two of the most ignored materials in any camp. Rust and vinegar. It wasn't magic, and it wasn't guesswork. It was chemistry that soldiers, especially scouts, sappers, and night watch units, quietly mastered because it worked even when every other option failed. What makes this technique so compelling is that it comes straight from the field, not from a lab or a survival manual written years later. It's a trick born of necessity, tested under pressure and nearly forgotten today. If you're a historian, you'll appreciate how this bridges science and improvisation. If you're a survivalist, you'll see immediately how it still applies in a world where gear breaks and electricity can disappear. And by the end of this guide, you'll understand exactly how soldiers coaxed usable, steady light out of rusted metal weak acid and a bit of patience, and how you can replicate the same reaction safely and effectively today. This method wasn't considered a primary light source. It was, um, a fallback, something used when lantern oil ran out, when candles were simply too risky, or when patrols needed extremely low, steady illumination for reading maps or repairing equipment without producing a bright flame. Rust was, well, everywhere. Metal tools, canteens, bayonets, tins, shovels, all of them prone to corrosion. Vinegar, or really any acidic liquid, was also common in field rations or medical stores. What soldiers discovered was that the reaction between iron oxide and mild acid releases small but consistent energy in the form of heat and gas. When directed through the right setup, that energy can trigger a faint but continuous glow through phosphorescent or carbon-coated materials. This wasn't fire. It wasn't a spark. It was a slow, controlled chemical glow, just enough for short-range visibility without drawing too much attention. When acidic vinegar is applied to rust, the acid dissolves the iron oxide and exposes fresh iron. As the reaction cycles, hydrogen gas forms along with iron ions and the surface heats slightly. Soldiers learned that certain natural minerals, like crushed calcium sulfate, chalk dust, or even fine campfire charcoal, could glow faintly when warmed by slow reactions. Over hours, the glow remained surprisingly stable. Though this was never bright enough to light up a tent the way a lantern would, it provided all the illumination needed for reading small documents or checking gear. The science behind it is simple but effective. A slow exothermic reaction feeding a weak phosphorescent surface. A basic working unit, you see, starts with a rust source. Often a steel can or sheet scraped clean from an abandoned site. Soldiers would crush surface rust into a fine powder and place it in a shallow container made from folded metal or sometimes thick leather. They'd add just enough vinegar to form a paste. Into this paste they'd press a thin layer of mineral powder or charcoal. The key was, well, keeping the paste moist enough to sustain the reaction without drowning it. They often used rolled cloth or braided twine as a sort of wick-like holder, not to burn, but to maintain structure and prevent the glow surface from cracking. 
Once prepared, the mixture began reacting within minutes. The glow would begin slowly, reach a usable brightness within half an hour, and continue for one to three hours, depending on moisture and temperature. The more finely ground the rust, the better the illumination. If you want to replicate this historically significant method, you can do it safely with controlled materials. Start by collecting heavily rusted steel and grinding it into a powder. It's best to avoid using paint-coated or chemically treated metals. Mix the rust with plain white vinegar until you form a thick paste. Then spread a thin layer of powdered chalk, plaster dust or fine hardwood charcoal on top. Place this mixture in a shallow metal lid, ceramic dish or fire-safe container. Set it outdoors or in a ventilated area because the reaction releases trace hydrogen gas. Within 20 to 30 minutes, you'll see a soft ember-like glow across the surface. The setup will never produce an open flame, which is why it was so valuable for low visibility operations. If the reaction dries out too fast, add a few drops of vinegar. If it becomes too wet, stir in more rust. The balance is the entire trick. Modern survivalists can, you know, adapt this method using rust scraped from old tools and vinegar carried in any field kit. In long-term power-out scenarios, it becomes a reliable backup for map reading or night signalling at close range. Even with modern LED gear, batteries fail, containers crack, and digital equipment becomes useless in extreme cold or moisture. A chemical glow source this simple gives you a fallback that requires no manufacturing and no electricity. It can be replenished indefinitely as long as you have iron, oxygen and weak acid. In a disaster area with abandoned structures, rust becomes one of the most plentiful resources you can harvest. Vinegar or even acidic fruit fluids can drive the reaction. And unlike flame-based light, there's no risk of starting a fire in dry brush or drawing attention from far away. For historians, it's a rare window into the resourcefulness of soldiers who didn't accept darkness as a limitation. For survivalists, it's proof that every scrap, no matter how useless it looks, has potential. If this kind of forgotten field science excites you as much as it does the rest of us in the Warfield Survival Community, make sure you subscribe, share this guide with someone who loves history, and stick around for more deep dives into the tricks that kept soldiers alive when the odds were against them.